these marvelous pictures of Christ and his work. In these instructions, there was a pattern or a model for Moses to work with. He was shown in advance exactly what the final result should look like. Nothing was to be left to the thoughts of man, but of God alone. Therefore, the tabernacle and all of its implements reflect that which is of divine origin. Everything about them then was to symbolize or to picture something else. In the case of the menorah, there is an immense amount of detail for us to consider. This third piece of furniture in the tabernacle follows logically after the first two. The Ark of the Covenant with its mercy seat and then the table of showbread. The Ark with the law inside is a picture of Christ fulfilling the law. Thus, he embodies the law. The crowning aspect of that was his death, which was pictured by the mercy seat. After his earthly work, pictured by these things, comes the table of showbread. With his work accomplished, he could truly be considered our bread from heaven. His resurrection proved it, and his words were vindicated in that act. We can now participate in his life by receiving his work. From that, we become a part of the lump of bread, his body. Immediately following that are the details of the menorah. The light of the lamp proceeds from the oil burning on the lamp. Thus, the oil is a picture of the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, illuminating the holy place. This could only follow after his death, as he himself said in John 16. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. After Christ's death, we could receive his body as our bread of life. From that act, the spirit is given to us. As you can see, the order with which each of these pieces have been named and described follows the pattern of the work of Christ for us as is outlined in the Bible. Each article follows logically and naturally one after another.